consider the rectangular point, x equals minus a half, y equals minus a half, z equals zero. Convert to cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Now, for cylindrical, we're looking for r, theta, and z. z is given for free, z is zero. So I just need r and theta. Now, for x and y, the xy plane, we get our r and theta just by converting to polar coordinates. So here, we'll have r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So it's gonna be 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, gives me a half. Take the square root, that gives r equals 1 over square root of 2. I can clean up by multiplying by square root of 2 over square root of 2, and that turns into r equals square root of 2 over 2. Now, if I'm looking for theta, I have two options. One, I can just plot our point in the xy plane, so that's going to be down here. The x and the y value are the same, so that's going to mean we're looking at a multiple of pi fourths. The multiple of pi fourths in this quadrant is going to be 5 pi fourths, so that's going to be our theta. Now, that's getting off too easy, so let's make sure we can check it with the equations. So, in rectangular from polar, we'll have x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. So here, what are we going to do? Cosine and sine, I can write in terms of x over r, y over r. So let's check. If I take cosine theta, x over r, x is minus a half, r is square root of 2 over 2. All right, I have to clean this up, so I'm going to multiply by 2 square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2. Then, what's going to happen? These 2's are going to take out the 2's in the denominators. Then, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 on the bottom turns into a 2, and we have a square root of 2 up top. We also have a minus sign. So what comes out is going to be minus square root of 2 over 2. If you carry out the same manipulation for the sign, so I'll be y over r, Okay, it's going to be the same exact procedure, gets you sine of theta equals minus square root of 2 over 2 also. So here, okay, we know square root of 2 over 2 goes with a multiple of pi fourths. We have minus signs on both coordinates. So again, we get the multiple of pi fourths in the third quadrant. So that's, again, 5 pi fourths. So that's our cylindrical point. Square root of 2 over 2, 5 pi fourths, 0. The spherical coordinates are given by rho, theta, and phi. We get theta from the cylindrical coordinates as 5 pi over 4. So I just need rho and phi. Now, rho is just the distance from the origin to our point. So it's going to be rho squared equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's equal to 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 0, or a half. So rho is going to be the square root of that which is going to be square root of 2 over 2. Same manipulation that we did for r. Okay, the check. We have in cylindrical, rho squared equals r squared plus z squared. z is equal to 0 here, so we have rho squared equals r squared, square root both sides. Rho and r are positive, so rho is equal to r. And we see that the rho we compute here is the same as what we computed for r. Only thing left is phi. So how do we get phi? Phi is going to be, you take your z-axis, take your point, it's going to span a plane. So in that plane, I start at the positive z-axis, and I come down until I hit our point. We're to sweep out an angle, that's going to be our phi. Note, if phi goes all the way down to the negative z-axis, then we're going from 0 to pi. So phi is going to be between 0 and pi. Now, here we can get phi as a straight shot. Okay, if I start at okay, the positive z-axis, we know our point lives in the xy plane. So as I come down, we're going to sweep out 90 degrees or pi halves. So our phi is pi halves. Okay, let's check the equations just to see that that's borne out. Now, what we'll do is I'm going to take this right triangle here. We'll put it on its side. So what do we know? So the hypotenuse is just going to be the distance from the origin to our point. So that's going to be rho. This is our angle phi. 
So the adjacent is going to be rho cosine phi. Now that's also the height of our point, so that's going to be the z. So we know z is equal to 0, so we're going to have rho cosine phi 0. We know rho is non-zero, so I can divide through, leaving me with cosine phi equals 0. Okay, cosine phi is 0, so that's going to be the x value in the unit circle. So we're going to be either up here or down here, but we know we're only taking angles between 0 and pi. So our phi has to be pi halves, and that checks our work.